It's something new. Hi, I'm Brett, and uh, you can think of me as The Appreciator. This is a new series of internet transmissions. I've been doing these things uh, mostly on a uh, small independent uh, channel called The Overnight Scape Underground, which you can find at onsug.com. Many find talk pop culture related programs there but uh it, this will be on the overnight scape underground but we're we're expanding we're expanding into new worlds and uh, we're bringing you the appreciator on a regular basis right here where you're hearing it now wherever that may be um i appreciate pop culture and other cool things uh it's pretty random but uh i hope you will have fun and uh, any comments any uh, contributions ideas and I'm always looking for topics things to watch things to listen to and uh, I'll appreciate them or uh, hopefully I'll appreciate them because uh, it, not enough appreciation is given in today's uh, pop culture and media world uh, I'm finding a lot of uh, it, it, it just because one thinks of themselves as a critic doesn't mean you're supposed to just tear things apart and criticize them um, if you're criticizing something and ripping it apart it kind of takes the fun out of the enjoyment for example there is uh, I've been watching uh, the Mandalorian which is as far as I'm concerned great entertainment uh, good fun uh, the effects are decent I mean yeah once in a while it gets a little and it can be cheesy but what's wrong with cheesy uh, I enjoy when science fiction isn't so pedantically scientific isn't so strict to canon um, shows like for example uh, I'm an old geezer I used to watch Lost in Space and yes it's just I name and by today's standards ridiculous but when it was made the science well until we landed on the moon and the space program and some scientific advances I kind of like the idea that we saw outer spaces anything is possible as close as the moon there could have been moon men uh, green cheese uh, all of our uh, science could have been wrong and maybe it still is it's hard to say I mean you got your conspiracy theorists out there who um, almost anything you can find a conspiracy theorist who um, has an interesting take on things there's folks who think we never really landed on the moon and it was all just some story but back to the uh, I'm digress I, I digress pretty well yeah as you will find if uh, this captures your attention um, the Mandalorian is based on uh, the Star Wars mythos and I've never been a huge Star Wars fan I enjoyed the first movie very very much when it first came out yeah I'm that old um, saw it in the theater probably within a couple months of its release and it was big and it was fun and yeah again by today's standards a lot of the so-called science probably doesn't stand up but uh, then came the trilogies and the trilogies and to this day I have only seen the original trilogy and uh, the very first of the second trilogy they made and yes they don't run in a chronological order and I don't even know what the chronological order is so those of you who are these die-hard canonist Star Wars fans are already slapping your foreheads at me but make it a fun slap I like the Mandalorian it was I was turned on to it by some friends and it's just goofy uh, that the baby Yoda character is probably what drew me although I, I really like 
uh, Pablo as uh, the Mandalorian, the whole, uh, this is the way uh, that, that he, at least it, for a couple of uh, times, never takes his masks off, follows this creed. And uh, so far there's three seasons and uh, there's, I don't know, but with ratings and whatever's going on with Disney now, it's hard to say whether there will be a uh, fourth season, but if there is, I am awaiting it. The story arc has a couple of quirks, um, but I very much have been enjoying it. Gina Carano uh, was on, and then for whatever reason, you can go into that yourself. Uh, I don't know. Uh, just who knows what goes on behind the scenes. I, have you seen the YouTubes, perhaps? I've taken a peek at them. That isn't what matters to me. Indeed, if I am amused, uh, it can be of any persuasion as far as the underlying, um, I don't know, politics. Uh, I, I'm really trying to avoid all that because it's just, it takes away from the precious time we have to enjoy. Uh, it, it, too many people have fallen into this. It, it's your leisure time and just listening and watching things that we can't do anything about don't really affect our day-to-day -day lives. And it's just this one big contention and the people who are my friends who are so wrapped up in these ideas, it, it becomes difficult to, it's just, some won't even talk to me because they perceive that because I might not 100% agree with how they feel that I just, they don't want to talk to me. I come from a time where people could have political differences and still remain friends and even have political discussions without like getting so angry. If they we're carrying a lot of anger and that's not good. And that's what's good about The Mandalorian because whatever you want to interpret some underlying or thoughts of the people who perform in it or write it, fat pooey. This is just good, fun, explosions, adventures. It's improbable, but it's, it's probable that uh, if there are beings gallivanting around the galaxies, they're going to look like humans or like the baby Yoda or relate on some sort of level just as you and I perhaps no 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 um, if you're just if the real aliens out there who knows I mean it, it, you can't tell I was just recently in Roswell New Mexico of course famous for the landing perhaps crash landing of an alien ship back in 1947 and I'd like to believe that something like that happened, uh, despite the fact that probably it didn't. It's just fun. And we went to the museum, and they're playing it up as it's... Why spoil the fun of people who do believe this stuff? Um, the people who believe we didn't land on the moon, maybe. It's, I, I, I wasn't there. I, I mean, I watched it on TV as a kid. That was like my thing, outer space and lost in space, as I said. But Mandalorian has decent acting. The effects are good. Um, and the stories are just this rollicking space action, good versus evil. Um, they bring back some of the characters from the old uh, Star Wars, which... Yeah, that doesn't. The and yes, I have. It's been explained to me very carefully why this doesn't really fit for people who enjoyed and are um, very vested in the Star Wars franchise. But it's still it's entertaining, and uh, that is my buzzword for uh, the the fun entertainment. It, it's just a world of entertaining out there and 
um, just guys fighting with lightsabers and saving the universe and, and protecting... The, well, the Mandalorians are a uh, now their home planet Mandalore, from my understanding, was taken over or destroyed or ravaged in one of the uh, canon Star Wars things. And the Mandalorian and the people he encounter, um, well, one, he's become the protector to this cute little puppety baby Yoda. And it's, yeah, it's dopey. I, I, I don't, I, I'm repeating myself, aren't I? But I like Dopey. Baby Yoda is just so cute and lovable, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, if that makes me sound juvenile, yes. Uh, let's just say I'm young at heart. And if you haven't caught it, I check it out. I mean, there aren't that many seasons. Each season is about eight episodes, and they run about 45 minutes. And you can probably get some sort of free deal on this Disney Plus, um, which there's a lot of good goofy stuff there. And they have all of these Star Wars uh, CGI shows, the original trilogy, all the additional films. And again, I've yet to see them. I like the Baby Yoda show. Uh, and they had a Boba Fett series, which, I don't know, a lot of people who are, were familiar with Boba Fett and how he fit in to the canon of Star Wars were seemingly infuriated. But I had a great time, and the actor who played Boba Fett was fun. Again, this is just like a Saturday matinee cowboy movie set in outer space, and uh, it brought to us in, in living color on our television so uh, if you have any comments I am more than willing to go back and forth and uh, you'll hear this email address a lot um, the email address to reach me with your comments or uh, questions or what have you is kpqr.torc at gmail.com once again kpqr.torc at gmail.com and uh, I live and have lived for about 15 years now in a funky little town in the middle of nowhere in New Mexico kind of directly between Albuquerque New Mexico and El Paso Texas uh, an exit right off of the interstate brings you to and you may have heard of it the town of truth or consequences which if it doesn't matter anymore, but it was named after a game show that was very popular in the golden age of radio. This town changed its name to Truth or Consequences back in 1949. Back then, one of the most popular programs on radio, and uh, this was when radio was still as big as television. People would sit around the radio together and listen to programs. There was a stunt-based game show called Truth or Consequences where they would give people crazy challenges and if they passed them, they would win. And for a publicity stunt, the host at the time, Ralph Edwards, who uh, later did a show called This Is Your Life you might be familiar with, decided that any town in the United States that would change its name to Truth or Consequences, they would come down to that town and do a big radio broadcast from there. And this town, one, changed the name to Truth or Consequences, and Ralph Edwards indeed came here, and he fell in love with the place. He came here every year thereafter until his death in the late 80s, if I'm not mistaken, is when Ralph passed. And he would bring celebrities down in the, the Fiesta, which is held the first weekend in May every year here, is still a continuation of that celebration. Even though the, uh, a lot of people here in town want to change the name back to what it was before Truth or Consequences, which is Hot Springs 
New Mexico. And yes, we have wonderful hot springs in Truth or Consequences, New Mexico. And if you like that, if that, if this is a great place to come for a vacation, as long as you are looking for a place where you can just relax and do almost nothing. There's no fancy attractions. I mean, yes, Spaceport America is near here if and when they actually start launching celebrities into outer space. But that's quite actually a distance. There's some shops, there's some restaurants, and there are a number of facilities where you can lay back in a hot tub filled with this wonderful hot mineral water. And you can just do nothing. That don't bring your computer with you and just forget about everything. Bring a good book or something else you enjoy. Kick back and take some time to get away because this is like away from everything and you literally can get away from it all in truth or consequences. And um, recently uh, some friends visited and they wanted to check out more places in New Mexico, which is fine because, to be honest, for the last 15 years, my uh, forays out of truth or consequences have been very few and far between. And uh, years ago, I used to live in Santa Fe, many years ago, and I've made sort of a return after almost 20 years, about 20 years, to Santa Fe with them to see the current big attraction in Santa Fe. You've probably heard of it. It's a, an art playground, not quite an amusement park. It's an active gallery of incredibly funky, outer space, kitschy artwork and it's like walking through different environments. It's called Meow Wolf. And those of you who are familiar with, say, Game of Thrones, it, it was founded and is uh, operated by George R. R. Martin, but doesn't matter who operates it. It is more pure escapism, cool, psychedelic, hallucinogenic types of art exhibits. And you wander through this huge indoor area. The building it's in used to be a bowling alley and now it's all these corridors and secret passages and cool funky black lit artworks and environments. It really is um, different and very, uh, re very reasonable for what it is. Um, and as I say, we went there, and I was kind of expecting it to be just... But I really enjoyed my visit to Meow Wolf, and uh, perhaps you will too. If you're ever... Uh, New Mexico, uh, I'm not paid to promote it. Uh, I'm not paid to promote anything here, nor am I... Per well, hey, I'll take your money, but I'm going to be honest. Uh, I'm not going to promote anything that I don't feel... It's fun to promote. But Meow Wolf, yes. Mandalorian, yes. I appreciate these things. And it's, it, we're back to digressing. We're just jumping. But this is something uh, I appreciate. Uh, I, even when I live in a large place, I tend to pack rat, keep stuff that has sentimental value and uh, objects and, and we all have that. We have these closets full of stuff that we feel we can't live without. But some of it, I mean, at least me, I haven't looked at it in years. If I do, it, you know, if you look at it first, oh, I got this from so-and-so. Oh, that's nice. And then you just move this. And it stacks up. We, we all know this. It stacks up quickly and incredibly and vastly. And to what end? I mean, uh, working as I do with a lot of estates and uh, things like that in uh, my work. Uh, I work in an antiquarian bookstore and that's where we get a lot of our stuff. Some person has spent their life 
appreciating, like I do, books and collecting them. And uh, when their time on the planet is done, they have these uh, heirs who just, you know, they wind up all of a sudden with this house full of stuff. And their first thought is they want to sell the house because they probably nowadays, because people live longer, uh, they're not orphans or anything. They're, some of the people are 70 years old or older and their parent has passed and suddenly in their lap is this house full of whatever was accumulated and it isn't stuff they love or even have an interest in so what they do is they pull one of those big dumpster containers out in front of the house and everything this person loved and collected is uh, summarily tossed into this dumpster and that's the end of it. It goes out to the landfill and life goes on. But I decided that I would cut my losses. I have been living due to various uh, circumstances. I wound up moving into a very tiny place and I've had all this stuff that it was important. I can't throw it out. So here's boxes and piles and any space that wasn't being used for living instead of having more space to breathe and not feel like I'm in an enclosure someplace here was the stuff and I thank my friends uh, Irina and Silvio for convincing me how little of this stuff it was a revelation. Yes, uh, there's this mourning that I went through as I was tossing out all of these items. I mean, even I love books, but you know what? How many books did I have that I'd read and put on the shelf thinking, oh, I'll loan it to somebody. It's a shame to throw it out. Someday I might want to read it again. And you multiply that times X amount of years. And there's just all these books I don't even know that I have anymore. And there they are in these boxes, cluttering up my life and my thoughts. And I found true liberation. Uh, and it, it took uh, about five waves. Each time thinking, okay, I've now thrown out everything, everything that I don't need and everything I've kept is still valuable, precious to me. Uh, it could be useful and wave by wave, this little place that I live, record and work in has become more comfortable, cozier. If I have a person over, they're not just crushed and they're not interested. Have you ever tried showing somebody all of your cool stuff and they have this look on their face like, what are you doing, Brett? Uh, why are you showing me this pile of envelopes with funny stamps on them or this object? that you got from some person whose name you only remember the first name of? Um, or why are you keeping this because somebody who cared about gave it to you? You can remember the person and the event and all of that without the extra accoutrement, so to speak. Uh, so uh, what I am recommending and thinking you too would appreciate is Get into your closets, get into your basements, your attics, and we all have, no all, uh, most of the people within the sound of my voice, half or more, I, I would guarantee you of the objects in your living space are dispensable, disposable. If at some point in the future you need one, it's that we have amazing consumer stores, um, even things that you think, oh, it's vintage or like old comic books. 
old collectibles are only worth money to the shops that have you ever taken your comic book collection to a comic shop and you looked them all up on the internet and okay here is a comic book that some guy on the internet is selling for fifty dollars if you look he's been listing this thing every week or every month for ages and nobody's buying it and when it finally sells that fifty dollar comic book uh, sells for five bucks or less and here it is cluttering up my life who needs it it just goes away to take my word for it you will appreciate the appreciator for um and it uh, I'm not kidding around you know yeah yeah I'll do it right now as soon as we are done here or while you're listening just look in one drawer at all of the stuff and look how many pick the things that you haven't touched or used I'll give you a, a five years two years how many things in that drawer percentile wise yes you got it at some point somebody gave it to you it was a gift you know if I kept everything that was a gift because somebody might visit and be looking around for that uh, Albert the Alligator uh, figure that they gave me as a gift because they know I like the Pogo comic strip and it's, most of you don't even that's the thing also the things I'm hitting my mid 60s the things I grew up with and appreciated even people my age no longer remember and certainly by the time I croak my kid is not I mean again he might get the idea oh I can sell this on eBay take my word for it it isn't worth the time and and again you go to some comic book dealer with your big pile and long box full of comics and you look them up and there's two thousand dollars worth of stuff if the most any dealer is going to give you is one third of the quote unquote book value and odds are unless you have very um, desirable books it you're not gonna get that I mean, yes if you have an action comics number one the first appearance of Superman from 1938 that's worth keeping but there are probably out of the thousands and thousands of comic books ever published I'm telling you there are probably a handful that you could readily resell and get money for give them away to some kid even that you don't have to throw them out but get them out of your house and into the hands of somebody who is going to actively enjoy them or like I did I kept doing these purges and carrying all this stuff in plastic bags filling the dumpster outside and I don't know where all this stuff was hidden in my house I mean, this is a tiny little apartment and I feel like I carried out enough stuff to fill four of these and it may well be because space is tricky uh, I think uh, well I like to imagine that uh, yes Doctor Who fans that there's some tesseract like uh, attribute to my living space but really there isn't and again I now have space if I want to pace in my apartment I can do that now whereas just a few months ago that was like knocking things over and bumping into things I now have a clear path and uh, a, a clean house is a clean mind my friends and um, with that our uh, time together for this episode and there will be more this is the first episode of the appreciator with Brett aka PQ River and uh, there will be more once again the email address for your ideas and comments is kpqr dot t o r c at gmail dot com and uh, let's do this again let's do it again and again with appreciation and fun things to watch fun music fun things to do 
because let's face it we can all use more fun in especially in these days thanks for listening and uh, like i like to say till we meet again set the controls for the heart of the fun